I just one more video before I lose power here. Let me pull this up for a second. Um, let's go back to this. Um, yeah, I just want to show you a little bit of a mini tab simulation here and how a confidence interval, well, not really how it's constructed, but the idea of what it's telling you. So I have an ability in mini tab to generate random numbers, okay? And I can choose the random numbers come, to come from any distribution I would like to. So um, assume for, for this simulation that I have a nice, it's not drawing, there it is, a nice normal distribution, center at zero and sigma of one. Okay, so um, in other words, I mean, imagine pulling a random number from there. Um, most of them are probably going to be between negative 2 and 2 um, or within one standard deviation. So all I'm going to do is ask Minitab, generate for me 100 values. So generate like an x1, an x2, an x3, 100 values from a, a normal 0, 1 distribution. And I don't think the numbers will be surprising. To you. So I'm going to open mini tab here and I think it's under calculate. Yep. Random data. So you see there's a ton of distributions. Um, so generate data from a normal distribution. Uh, number of rows. Let's generate a hundred rows of data. Let's store it in C1, the first column. So I could have any mean and any standard deviation I want, but um, I'm saying take it from a bell curve with a center at zero, standard deviation one, generate a hundred random values from that distribution. So they're coming, and uh, there are the values, and you see 0 0.86, 0 0.06, 1.72, 0 0.1, negative 1.78, and right, I mean, most of them are between negative two and two, I, I have to think. I mean. If we got something beyond four, that's pretty unusual, right? I mean, to be beyond four standard deviations, but um, we could actually list them from high to low, but the bulk, right, 95% of your data is within two standard deviations, so probably most of the data is within there. Um, we can do in Minitab descriptive statistics, so um, I can just say, hey, display um, the statistics from here, so variable is C1. Um, what statistics? Let's get the mean, standard deviation, min max, that would be nice. Um, we don't have any missing. There were a hundred total. Maybe the median when we line them all up and look at the middle point. So let's tell Minitab, okay. And so it tells us the mean was, this is X bar, little X bar for our sample out of this entire population. And notice that we know the mean is zero, but we actually got 0.1. Uh, the standard deviation, we set it at 1, but you can see it's 0.909. It's not going to be exact. Um, here was the minimum. Here's the median, very close to the mean. Not surprising because I have a symmetric distribution. Max was 2.1. Okay, so nothing too surprising with that. Um, okay, let's go back to our data. If I was going to make a confidence interval, what I'm making it from actually is the the mean. The mean is going to be the center, right? That's my estimate. And then I'm going to go off in both directions around the mean and build a little interval for myself based on the standard deviation. So I'm going to use the mean, the standard deviation, and also the sample size to construct these. So right now let me just generate another, let's, this is going to seem weird, but I'm going to generate a hundred columns of normal zero ones. Uh, okay, why not? A hundred of them. So let's see. Uh, calculate random data from. Where's normal? Here's a normal. I'm going to generate columns C1 to C100, and all of them I want to be normal zero ones. Okay, so this column has a hundred values in it, normal zero ones. This has a hundred, hundred, hundred. Each of these columns I'm going to build a confidence interval. Now Minitab will do that for you, and I'm not telling you how to construct it yet, but I want you to take a look at these intervals. Um, basic statistics, one sample Z test, sample in columns C1 through C100. Um, standard deviation was 1, and uh, I want to make uh, confidence intervals. Let's do, um, maybe to 
make a point maybe more clearly. Let's make 90% intervals. So I'm 90% certain these intervals will contain the true mean mu. And we know what the true mean mu is because we're the ones that generated the random data. So let's see how many of them actually do contain the true mean mu, which is zero. So let's go up here. And uh, so it, you can see over here, 100 data values. There's the mean. There's the standard deviation. OK, so here's the confidence intervals that were made. Um, this one contains the true mean mu, which was 0. So one of them does 2, 3, 4, 5. Now here, look at the sixth one. I think that's the sixth one. I mean, the point is right here, you can see that um, this guy right here um, does not, it's the top one there, does not contain zero. So there's one confidence interval that doesn't contain the true mean mu. So let's keep going. Uh, there's a second one. It's low, doesn't contain mu. And you can kind of see why this is happening. Look at the mean. The mean is pretty far away from zero. So when I put a little interval around it, I'm not capturing zero. So there's two of them so far. Um, let's keep going. Um, here was another one. There's three. Uh, just looking. Now oh, here's another one. Well, I don't know if I counted this one. I don't know. Either this is three or four. And here's another one, five. Here's another one, six. Here's a seven. Here's an 8. We're already at 8. We only have 50 uh, trials. Here's another one. 9, 10. Surprising we're missing most of them low, which is not necessarily supposed to happen. 11, 12. I'm just most amazed that most of them are low. I don't know why we only have... Oh, here's another. So here's one high. 13, we missed it. Uh, 13. So the, right there, that that is a good idea about a 90% confidence interval. If I make 100 intervals, I expect about 90 of them to contain the true mean mu. Um, there's always that chance you're not going to get, even though you take a random sample, you're not going to get an X bar that will allow you to capture mu when you put the standard deviation around it. So um, if I had built 95 percenters, I'd expect about 95 to contain mu. If I had built uh, 99 percenters, about 99 of them should have contained mu. So the thing that's random, I think a lot of people think a confidence interval is not random. It's, it's, it's solid. The thing that's solid is mu. Mu. Somebody knows mu. Mu is known. The thing that's random is the interval. Every time you get a new random sample, you're going to get a new interval because you'll get a new X bar. You'll get a new standard deviation. Ah, so that's the main point I wanted to show you there. So let's go back to the, to the lecture. Um, so what I did is I made a uh, hundred observations of a normal zero one. I did this for a hundred different uh, intervals and I built 95% confident. Well, I actually built 90 and we saw that only about, well, 13 of them didn't have mu and about, what, 87 did. So if we had built 95ers, then approximately 95 of them would have contained the true mean mu. When you build it, you have to be thinking, you know, if I build a 99% confidence interval, I'm 99% certain I've captured mu. And the more certain you have, unfortunately, your interval is going to get a little bigger too, just to be able to capture mu. So, um, this is just a reminder here that um, mu isn't changing. Mu is a given thing. I mean, for any, even the true mean GPA of Rose Holman students, we don't know it, but it is a surefire, you know, it's not a thing, you know, it, at this moment, it is a given number. And if I collect a sample data, I'm going to get an X estimate with X bar and then try to, what I'm saying, net the true mean mu with it. So um, on average, we would expect 95 of them to contain mu. But some of them's not. You're always going to get that sample that doesn't, even if random and done correctly, won't, won't contain mu. Ugh. OK, so um, I hope that makes sense. And um, I wrote an example here, again, just another one that no matter what you're saying, you may not. And so you know, you may not capture mu. So here's um, a population whose true mean mu was 50. And 
somebody built, again, took random samples from the distribution, they had a mean of 50, built a confidence interval, and noticed that um, some of them don't contain 50. I mean, that's what's going to happen. Um, this was just an example saying, you know, if, again, I have a confidence interval right here that says, um, uh, I was trying to figure out the true mean GPA, not GPA, uh, earnings of college students over the summer. Government says mu is 4,500. I grab a random sample of 100 students, get this, build an interval, get this. I'm 95% certain this contains the true mean earnings of college students over the summer. The government said this, we're in contradiction. So either there's a 5% chance my interval doesn't contain mu or somebody's not telling you the truth. But we know the government always does, so okay, sorry, I had to throw that in. Okay, so I think that's a nice example and I'm going to stop it here and start again later. Um, and actually I better plug in soon to get more power. There it is. I have 14 minutes. Yay. Okay. Talk to you later.